morning, Don. Morning. You know what we're building today? A uh, an island. That's right. Outdoor kitchen. Outdoor kitchen island. That's yeah. right. Well, good morning, guys. It's another fine day at the off grid. Today we're working on a special project. I know you guys have been waiting for a project just like this, and today we're starting the outdoor kitchen. So, like, do we do we we don't even exactly know what this thing's gonna look like yet. Not entirely. No. No, I don't even. I don't it's know. It's a concept either. idea right now. Yeah, we got a concept. A, I, I find I find the easiest way to get something started or get something done is to just start it and kind of evolve as we go. You know, you want to balance it and you want to have the right size material and, and kind of give it some give it some balance because we got six by six. This thing has to be beefy because if it was tiny, it would look funny because the material is so big, right? That's right. Yeah. I think we got a good start. We got to basically secure the sides up and then flip it over onto its uh, feet and then see from there where we're gonna go. Cause I, I, I kind of have an idea of a, like a gabion basket for the lower half in order to kind of give it some style, some rocks. I've got a rock cache in the forest I wanna kind of get into. And uh, yeah, so that'd be cool. So I'm gonna bring you guys a little bit up to speed on the on the project already. Cause we've kind of started and I haven't even said hello yet. So the plan here is to build sort of a harvest table style island and it's going to be a place to hang out so it's gonna have some bar stools so you can hang out at the at the table you can uh, like a wash station on so I haven't quite decided what the final thing is going to look like yet I figure I'm gonna start building and evolve as we go I pretty much have all my timbers this is um, this is from a skid a really really big skid it's so six by six post I don't know what type of wood it is but it seems to be pretty durable because I've had it in stock for about six years now and it hasn't rotted and it's been outside. I imagine it's some sort of hemlock, but I, I do know it does stand up really nice. This video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. Raid Shadow Legends has taken over and gaming will never be the same again. They've set the bar high and there's no going back. Raid is the first game to bring true console level experience to your phone. The newest addition to Raid and my personal favorite is legendary champion from the High Elves faction, Deliana. Deliana is one of the strongest support champions in the entire game. She possesses some great skill sets and abilities, which will be helpful to all players, no matter at what stage of the game you're in. Raid's currently running a special Deliana chase event, where you can get your hands on the amazing Deliana just for logging in. All you have to do is log in and play Raid for the next seven days, between now and July 28th, and you'll get Deliana for free, that's it. The gifts keep coming. All new players, listen up. Once you're in the game, just enter promo code MYDELIANA to get your hands on everything. Get 50 XP brews to instantly get your legendary hero Deliana to max level 50, as well as a ton of silver. And there's a ton happening in Raid this month. They're bringing out five badass looking new champions that I can't wait to get my hands on. They're overhauling the champion vault and they've got loads of awesome smaller updates as well. On top of that, Raid's running a huge series of summer splash events for the whole month where you can get your hands on some incredible skins for everyone's favorite dwarf, Trunda. This is the best time to get started with Raid. So click my link in the description below or scan this QR code and you'll get hooked up with bonuses worth up to $30. We're talking a free epic champion Aina, 200k silver, one energy refill, one XP boost, and one ancient shard so you can summon awesome champions as soon as you get in game. All this treasure will be waiting for you. What are you waiting for? Join Raid today. Now that we've secured all our legs in place, as you can see, they're solid. You could, you know, mortise and tannin them and put a peg in them and, and that sort of stuff. But you know what? If you put enough screws into anything, it's gonna hold. I put in six inch screws. There's four per post down on an angle and then there's three inch screws kind of tacking this little board into it and uh this isn't going anywhere you could you could ram a truck into this thing and i can assure you my island will not move now all we got to do is lift it we're gonna roll it onto its feet right right don that's right <laughs> okay you grab the heavy side oh it's not light Okay, do you want to pull back? Let's get in the center and pull back. Scooching! I, get, I can't even lift. Do one side at a time. As you can see, it's coming together. It's 
the plan is I'm sitting in the location where the gabion basket is going to be. So this middle section is going to be covered in stone. So the original plan was to make the entire base out of stone, but then it was brought to my attention that you need a kind of a place for your legs. I always forget the legs. We're only gonna put the center of it because I believe that you kind of want a solid wall, kind of like defining space. So you don't want to be able to see through the underside of your island to the other side because it just doesn't define your space. I'm still going to maintain my Gabion basket kind of rock wall at the back and then I can actually add accent lighting underneath my table to accentuate my Gabion basket wall, which I think will be really cool. Now all I got to figure out is uh, as a way to put my mesh material on these two boards. This is going to be fun. And you know what the other thing cool about today or interesting about today is there's like wind warning we're having these gusts of like 100 kilometer an hour winds and i'm kind of you got to watch out like for wayward branches and trees falling on you it's kind of it's surreal out here right now so we're we're, we're keeping we're keeping an eye on the trees don's keeping an eye on the trees <laughs> every once in a while there's a gust and it's just like what the yeah can you see it's crazy it's not it's not blowing right now because i have the camera right don that's right. That's right. No blowing. There's there's a gust. So what we've done is we've added little cross members here in order to prevent the gabion basket from splaying out. Because once you have a lot of rock in the basket, it tends to want to bulb out. So that'll hold it. We've got eight of them in here. Um, so there sh they should do pretty good and then we got roofing nails attached at all the sides in order for it to maintain its form so the idea behind this wall is to add some style it'll be kind of cool so we have a strategic rock pile in the forest and by strategic I mean they're all clean we could use rocks that are around here but they're all dirty and full of clay and they'll never get washed off because it'll be somewhat protected under here I think it's an old um, farm field edge where they would have piled them there so they've been there for many many years and they've they've cleaned themselves up so that's that's what we're gonna do and we're gonna pile them in here so hopefully there's some pretty rock in there something with detail which I think will lend itself really nicely to this project we're going on an adventure we're going to the to the rock pile in the forest I got Don on the tractor he's following me and uh, I'll take you guys on a little bit of a tour if you guys want to go for a tour so the uh, the pond is over that away and uh, this is down the trail. So we're kind of walking real time. Gives you an idea of where everything is located. And uh, Don's gonna run me over if I don't go quick. So pretty brisk pace. And coming up here on my left is the you guys might have seen it before. There's the A-frame. So you see how far the A-frame is from the, uh, the pond in the main cabin. And then if we keep going, there's a rock pile there. But I don't know if that's the rock pile I want. I can just, I guess I could, sh I'll show you that one. So there's, there's a rock pile there. That's not the one we're gonna go with. We're gonna go with one that's over here. I think there's more mosquitoes in that pile. So we're gonna go further into the bush. Be cleaner rocks. rocks there. They're about the right size. How's that? It's a good parking job. Parked by sound. That's right. Feel. feel. It's like braille parking, right? So this is our pile of rocks. And everybody out there with this superstition that says like, you know, a pile of rocks in the forest is just burying a dead body. That is not true. It might be true. Hopefully there's no dead body under here, Don. He's already, you already got a pretty rock, but you're stuck in the bush. Yeah, that's right. Watch out. Incoming. There you throw that one. Go for it. Oh, okay. That is a pretty rock. Look how blue that thing is. That's a neat rock. All right, so this is where I'm going to grab rocks from.
I think that's too big for our thing. It's pretty though. It's a pretty rock on. It's a nine and a half inches across, yeah. It's too too big. Too big. Too big. We've got all the same size rock. But look at our pile. See our pile there? This is the pile, and then you can see. See our pile, and then you can see actually the stuff that's covering it. It's kind of like a thin layer of moss and then dirt. So who knows how long this pile of rocks has been here. Turn of the century. Land clearing, perhaps. You've been a nice, nice stone fence, Don. I think. It's a lot of work. A lot of work. That's pretty cool. We found this in the rock pile in the forest. I don't know exactly what it is. It kind of looks like a horseshoe, but it's not a horseshoe. It's kind of got like it's the ends are kind of thinned out, like they were like hand banged or something. What do you? What's your guess on this thing, Don? It's uh, something off a horse-drawn implement wagon, probably. You think so? It's like like a yoke or something like something that. Something goes on a yoke or something like that. That's weird. So like somebody was like dumping their rocks out and then they dumped this thing out and had a bad day because they were like where's my thing i gotta go back to the blacksmith and get a new thing made i don't know if you guys have an idea of what this thing is leave a comment and uh, maybe we can come to the i was thinking like this is kind of a cool towel holder you, you'd kind of give that thing a little bit of a, a little bit of a buff and uh you got yourself a bar towel holder for the island like what? Like, like, like right here, like, like, looking. like right there, or on the side, or something like that, where the sink's gonna go. But yeah, that that would be kind of cool. Other than, you know, you just need a tetanus shot before you use it. It's kind of cool. I, I think I always, I always find, like finding weird things in piles of random stuff. Like, like that's weird. Isn't that weird? I don't know. You guys don't think that's weird or if cool? It could just talk. Right? Yeah, this thing could talk. Like, how long? How long have you been in the rock pile for? Like, has it been 80 years? Has it been 100 years? Like, that's cool. Anyways, if you guys got an idea, let me know what you think about it. We're gonna we're gonna take advantage of the cool day today to uh, flatten out this area here because we're gonna put some deck boards here. Uh, we haven't quite um, finished the bar because we're gonna actually put an inlay in here. And I haven't decided what kind of wood yet. Um, so I'm just thinking about that. So we're just gonna flatten out the area here, rake it out, just kind of give us a nice little flat spot, because, yeah, because it can't be dirt, right? I figured this is a perfect opportunity to use a little bit more of these fence panels. I've got the uh, quite a few of them left. <coughs> they turned out to be actually really nice uh, decking boards. So I've got my EcoFlow Delta over there hooked up. It's a great little pack if you have a corded tool that works really well and you don't want to go battery. <coughs> Excuse me. Anytime you're dealing with uh, using a sawzall, I find that uh, the corded uh, sawzalls work extremely well for what they do. A battery uh, powered sawzall specifically with the battery attached to the tool does not work as well. So that's the plan today is to cut all these guys up because I need quite a few more deck boards uh, for, my, for my bar area. So I'm just going to pile them up on the tractor and then uh yeah head on down but uh there's quite a few i find it <coughs> there's a frog in my throat i find it easier to cut up nails as opposed to taking the nails out because you tend to break the board that way but yeah more boards i'm pretty excited about that
Well, it's getting pretty uh, pretty nice down here. It's it's hard to it's hard to get some it's hard to get work done. It's so comfortable. You know, you got the birds chirping. You got the nice place to relax. Got the pool over there. You know, you just want to come down here and just sit. It's it's quite. You got the birds. Look at those morning doves or pigeons or something. They're coming by the pond. Anyways, the. Uh, the long and the short of it is I have uh, I've been feeling a little bit under the weather lately. Um, my head is full of, I think, pollen or something like that, or it's a head cold or something. It's just, you could probably hear it in my voice a little bit. It's uh, it's a little rough talking, so I've been doing a little less talking lately, trying to get my, get my voice back. Um, <clears throat> you can kind of hear it. It's just, it's tucked in the back, but... Anyways, just give you a little bit of, there may not be as much talking on this. And I know some people will enjoy the less talking and some people will be like, you don't talk enough or something. Anyways, yeah, I'm just stopping to have lunch. Uh, we got some pretty good progress going on the, uh, on the outdoor kitchen. But uh, as for now, I've got the old bagged lunch instead and I've got my little coffee sitting right here with me, so. It is quite peaceful. You got the dragonflies kind of flying by and you've got, yeah. Other than the pollen, everything is cool, but I think the pollen's going to eventually stop. I think it's a record season for pollen this year, uh, especially the white pine trees, which you guys know I have a lot of white pine trees. So I think it's just kind of wafting down here. You can kind of see it in the air. It's, uh, it's, really, it's really bad this year. And, and I, don't know, I don't know why, but anyways. We're kind of trucking through it. Um, we're making some good progress, like I said, on the on the outdoor kitchen. So I'm really pleased with how it's coming out right now. So uh, yeah, we're just gonna carry on. I'm gonna enjoy my my ham and cheese, my ham and cheese sandwich, and my uh, my double double, and enjoy the kind of peace and tranquility of what this is actually becoming, which is what I wanted from day one is a place to kind of go out, relax, be off grid and enjoy nature. That's really what the goal was for this whole entire project. Like from day one, two years ago, actually, I think it's, it just, it just passed the two year anniversary of the start of this project uh, uh, as a whole. Like I guess the, the, you know, the major beginning of this project. So it's coming along nicely. We're at the two year mark. Um, you know, hopefully it just carries on because I, I, I'm quite enjoying myself. I hope you guys are enjoying yourself as well. But yeah, let's just let's just keep trucking along. I keep I enjoy building and uh, I'm just going to continue building. So anyway, we're at the stage of the project now. Where we're going to infill the top of this thing. Now, I like to wait until early morning in order to mill these guys because where the sawmill currently is, it's kind of very sunny midday and it gets really hot and the sawdust tends to slop, fly in your face. So if you can ever get to it in the early mornings when it's relatively cool, it seems to just go a little bit better. Got a special cherry tree that we ended up, uh, it was dead standing. We ended up cutting it down and then saving it for a special project. And I can't think of a better place to put it than right here. Infill this section here with cherry, which is not a lot of it, but uh, the one, I guess I have two shorter logs to do it. So I was gonna fill it in way this way in order to uh, kind of give it some style. It'll give it a nice little contrast between the, the, the timbers and then the red. As you guys can see, we've been making some pretty good progress on the decking, kind of working around the uh, the shade. So when it's in the shade, we, we end up putting more decking so you can kind of see it all the way around here, which uh, which is good, some good progress. We have still infill underneath the, uh, the island itself, but we've got lots of boards left. So we're going to kind of use as many boards as we have. That's all we have. So until we get some more, we can't uh, do more decking. Well, that took a minute to do. We did uh, about 300 square feet of boardwalk. We've got pretty much all around our kitchen island completed. Now this will help us keep the dust down, the dirt down, the mud down and all that kind of stuff. And Don taught me a word today. What? I forgot what it is, it's bu bucolic. Look that word up. This is, it's very bucolic down here. That's why it's so hard to get any work done. So we've got, uh, we're gonna do our kitchen island, which I'm pretty excited about. It's kind of like the crowning touch of the whole thing because we're gonna do an inlay. So I, uh, I ended up milling some cherry and I ended up also milling some walnut. I didn't actually show milling the walnut, but I was like, all right, I, I got this walnut log and I'm gonna see if I can mill it to see if I have enough. So I don't know if I have enough. So it's, it's a question of do I do an inlay with cherry or do I inlay with walnut? I don't know. We're just gonna we're just gonna kind of we're gonna try it and see what it looks like. We can always 
swap it out if we don't like it. So do we want like a red hue to it or do we want to keep with the rustic dark brown colors? I don't know. We should, uh, we should have a look. This is where that cherry tree came down. As you can see, the stump is still there. I got a proximity to the pond. See the pond over there and then the main cabin's up there. So this guy was standing, leaning towards the cabin at the time and we ended up taking it down. So yeah, that's what's left of the tree stump. So I've been saving that log for a special project. Let's go do that now. Here is my special log. It doesn't look like much. You can see how it's kind of like beyond its prime. But inside that log, there's a diamond. We're gonna look inside that log. And then I have uh, <clears throat> another one over here. This one looks to be in better, better quality than the other one, but uh, we'll start with that one and see. We got enough to do for inlay. You guys have any idea what that thing is? I found it in the bush. Actually, my dog found it in the bush. I don't know, it's got one tooth. Looks angry. Rawr. I don't know. All right, so this is what we've got to choose from. So you can see this is the walnut and this this is the cherry. So you're going to think it's not that cool of wood. Well, you can't really see it until you put a finish on it. So this is the test. So this is what varnish will do to this wood. So you can see the color that it comes out of the wood. You can see the difference. So it's whether or we not we want walnut or cherry. What do you think? What do you think, Don? I'm leaning to the walnut just because of the wood grain. Yeah, it's got it's got it's pretty cool. It's dark. It's got that that rich color. The cherry's pretty nice too. I don't know. It's gonna be the it's gonna be the store of the ages. Which is the, which is the one? Is it the cherry or is it walnut? I don't think they both look okay. So you can kind of see. That's a better look actually at like that. So you can see the walnut's got that dark, dark walnut color. And that's got the cherry color. So I don't know. I guess if we have enough walnut, let's do walnut. Opinion? Yeah. Which one's which? <laughs> which one's which? What do you mean which one's which? Here, you gotta pick which one's which. You got the red one or the brown one? I think the brown one matches better. What's the brown one? Do you know what type of species that wood that is? Walnut. There you go. Go with the brown. 
brown because it's kind of dull. If you go orange, it'll be like... It might show up the water stains if there's a water stain. We're going to finish it. We're going to varnish it. It's going to be like... So you're not taking my opinion anymore? Yeah, we're going to varnish the brown. The walnut. The walnut. All right. Well, that's what we picked. Okay. You just confirmed. All right. <laughs> yeah, walnut. It matches your beard, sort of. Part of the cherry. No. And no. the walnut mixed together. It's, it is. A, it's a mix between <laughs> walnut and cherry. There you go. Look at the fish. See the fish going? The fish still, are still going. What's it? It's very bucolic down here. Did you know that? I, I don't know. I just noticed the mosquitoes because it came from the swamp. So it's very bucolic. Just, okay. Just go with it. All right. Do you know what bucolic means? No idea. The next part of this build is have a kitchen sink because you can't have a kitchen without a sink. So my buddy Mark ended up finding this in a uh, in a discard pile and he says, do you want this thing? And I said, absolutely, it's pretty cool. My ideal sink would be one big large basin, but you know, beggars can't be choosers. So I've got a big sink and a little sink. So uh, this is gonna go on the end of the island about counter height, which is about 36 inches. Bean wants to help. Do you wanna install, help install this thing? What do you think, Bean? Hey, yeah. She's, uh, she's actually liking it down here. She, uh, she tends to just kind of leave um, normally. She'll just come down here and then uh, you don't want to go back in the truck or whatever. But uh, she seems to like it down here so she sticks around, which is, is, is a testament to how cozy it is down here. So we need a sink. My plan is to uh, plumb this into the water catchment system at the main cabin. So I'll have it kind of uh, buried and it'll be three seasons because uh, in the wintertime everything freezes. So but uh, we have ample amount of storage up on the hill and I think I can actually gravity feed it down here uh, because it's so high. It's probably like about a 20 or 30 foot elevation. So I'll, uh, I'll be able to gravity feed it, which is, which is kind of cool. I don't need any battery power up there to run it. Yeah, so that's where it's gonna go and uh, it'll, be, it'll be a great addition to the outdoor kitchen. Let's just, we gotta build a countertop and some legs and some stuff like that. So we're gonna, we're gonna do that now. It's always nerve-wracking cutting a hole for the sink. I don't have a template for the specific sink, so I've kind of given it a little bit of room, 19 and a half by 30 inches. I've marked it out on here, and normally you'd use a jigsaw, but I don't have a jigsaw, so I'm gonna use a skill saw. I once watched a guy do this with a brand new countertop, and he plunge cut with a skill saw, and it hit a screw below, and it ran away. And uh, then I walked away, because I knew what was coming next. <laughs> don't recommend doing plunge cut on a countertop with a skill saw. Well, how's that for kitchen sink? It looks like it fit perfectly. I'm impressed with it. So my thoughts are to keep this thing kind of hovering, but uh, as you know, sinks are heavy and when there's water in that thing, it's gonna be extra heavy. So I'm thinking I'm gonna put a, a diagonal cross brace over here in order to kind of give it a little bit more rigidity. My second thought was to maybe make it an apron sink. I don't think I'm gonna do that, although I might. For the time being, I think I'm going to, uh, I'm going to plumb it in with buckets. I'm going to put some five gallon pails underneath it and then I can use it to water plants or water trees or whatever. So it's, it's kind of like, you know, when you're, when you're cooking and you got some dishes you want to clean, you can kind of do that and uh, you have the water. When you're done with it, there's no, uh, obviously there's no drainage around here. You're kind of like, it's like, it's a glorified bucket to wash it in. And it's uh, going to be very convenient. But I think it looks great. It's got the, uh, the cherry with the, the miter joints. I still got to give it a little bit of tickle with some sandpaper and then probably give it a clear coat to make it last. But uh, otherwise I'm very pleased with the way this has turned out. The brand is Artica? I think that's like a Costco brand. I don't think it's very old either. Because it's got the, I'm not sure why there's a stainless steel thing here. But uh, yeah, the tap, I don't even know if the tap works. So I gotta hook it up and uh, hopefully it doesn't leak. But uh, yeah, I think, I think the previous owners didn't like it because it's asymmetrical. Because this, the tap doesn't actually sit in the middle anywhere so it kind of looks like it's offset which it's not it's kind of it's right in the middle of uh, my little countertop here so i'm very pleased with this thing i just gotta add some more structure to it and uh 
Got a little sanding. I figured you guys might be interested in how this countertop is secured down without actually having any fasteners shown above. What I did was actually made little blocks and then pre-drilled and then screwed up through the countertop, but not going through the surface of the countertop and then through in the side. And that gives us a nice solid attachment point. And then I did diagonal bracing here. I've got two screws. I got one screw here and then one screw underneath. And that gives us ample support for the countertop itself. And then fun fact, if you need cheap fasteners, the uh, Princess Auto's got them on sale. The 10 pound box is an exceptional deal. If you go to their website, you can check them out. I always stock up when everything I need. Anytime anything goes on sale that I use regularly, I call them consumables, I stock up because you never know when you're gonna need them and you might as well buy them when they're on sale. So yeah, check them out, Princess Auto. For those guys, I got them. Uh, I got all the sizes, like three inch, two and a half inch, two inch deck screws. So this is a fine piece of furniture built with essentially deck screws, some pressure treated wood, and then some off cut cherry, which uh, that's the fancy part is the cherry. Once this thing's all stained up, it's gonna look like a million bucks. It's actually not, not bad underneath the sink too. <laughs> All right, now that we got all the water pipes hooked up, we're gonna give it a whirl. So I, uh, I kind of had a little bit of an afterthought to add a, a hose bib for uh, cleaning the pool and filling the pool. Uh, my original plan was just to put a kitchen sink in here so I could have cold water just to wash dishes and stuff, but that was kind of an afterthought. I put the hose bib there, so that's pretty cool. Um, I've got, uh, it's actually surprisingly difficult to marry up a, uh, a kitchen, like household plumbing, up to that uh, black irrigation pipe. Uh, but I managed to find enough pipes to actually do it. I couldn't find, I was trying to find inline irrigation pipe valves and they don't, they don't make them anymore, probably because they kept breaking on the people. So they just simply don't make them anymore. So uh, I'll have to run up the hill if I have a leak down here. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna turn the water on at the water collection system up on the hill and see how well the gravity feed works. Cause it's gonna be gravity fed from top of the hill. I don't know what like head pressure is cause it's, it's, it's probably about 30 feet up. So uh, yeah, we're gonna see. So if this is your first video and you're just tuning in, you're like wondering how the heck I'm getting water in the forest. Well, this is the main cabin, it's up on the hill. You guys can see it, it's over here. So this is the main cabin and it has a water collection system on the roof. So it's got a piece of ABS pipe that collects the water. It's got a slit in it and it collects the water and it kind of keeps out most of the debris. And then it feeds into this water collection system, which is a huh, thousand, thousand liter tote or 250 gallon uh, cistern. So it hangs on to the water. And now what I'm gonna do is actually turn the water on. So the valve at the bottom of this tank is off. I wanna turn it on, come on. Oh, it's been a while since this has been on, so. All right, so now what it's gonna do is gravity feed all the way down to the, uh, to the kitchen down there, which is hopefully I don't hear Don yelling, so there's probably no leaks. All right, so we're gonna head back down there and uh, let's see how much water, uh, I'm curious to see how much pressure is actually gonna come out of that uh, bottom section. I should just check how much water we have. Um, we're about, looks about three quarters full. You can kind of see it there, you see? So anyways, that's, uh, that's a fair amount of water. So uh, we just gotta be uh, cautious with our water usage and I've got buckets underneath to uh, collect anything that comes out of the sink in order to uh, reuse it again for other purposes. The moment of truth. Do you think this is gonna work? Absolutely. Do you, you ever funneled a beer from a third story? No. Cause that's the, that's the, the premise or the, uh, I guess the, the method that we're using is we're basically funneling water from the third story. So if you've ever funneled, I've never funneled a beer from, or a drink for that matter. It doesn't have to be a beer. It could be, you could be funneling a Gatorade from the third story. It comes out in a hurry. So let's, let's see, let's. <laughs> water, we got water in the forest. That's pretty cool. Actually, we should probably not. We've got a bucket on the bottom of it that we're collecting it because we can reuse it again for uh, irrigation, watering our plants or whatever. But uh, yeah, we should probably not waste that. We can see that it works. It works crazy well. That's one, a one more. What's that? One more tap. Oh, the tap. That's right. We got. Uh, well, that's, that's got to work. If that one works, this well, is our. Sure, sure. sure, sure it's it. Holy moly, that's good. 
So that's our uh, that's to clean our pool and fill and fill you fill the pool clean the pool so it's our hose bib we should probably oil that thing before it uh, gets too much water damage but uh yeah there's be a hose there but uh, i'm pleased with that that's pretty cool that was a uh that was a great uh junk find that was a discard from a, a countertop place my buddy mark actually ended up uh saving it for me so that uh and that's a delta faucet so i don't even know the value of that that faucet's probably worth like three four hundred bucks brushed stainless steel isn't that like like it's almost a shame to have it in the bush yeah right i wouldn't mind having this just in my kitchen isn't it nice it's a <laughs> it's it's like boutique hotel yeah. sort of sort of style like you would see <laughs> a cherry countertop anyways all right so our next project is uh we're going to be working on the top of this thing i want to sand it out and i've going i have um this which is going to finish it which is a cutting board oil and i want to i want to coat it with this stuff to kind of give it a little bit of weather resistance in case it gets it gets uh rained on or if any kind of moisture gets in it also to protect it from spills and whatnot so that's everything's gonna get a coat of oil and it's a food grade oil so if you have food on here it won't contaminate your food and it's gonna really make this pop right yes don's like yep yep maybe Hope have you ever so. seen ever use this stuff no I've never it's like varnish it. but you can eat it no i don't think you want to eat too much mineral oil but you no. can eat it but uh, yeah, I, I'm pleased with this. All right, let's get sanding. Um, I've got two belt sanders. It shouldn't take us that long. And uh, we can see what the final outlook. It's always exciting to sand wood down to kind of give it, show the, you know, final product. Well guys, I'm pretty happy the way that this turned out. You can see the uh, the hemlock wood on the outside and then the walnut inlay in the middle. And you can see how the the uh, oil brings out the finish of the grain of the wood. You can see that, it looks like a million bucks now. We've got our gabion basket wall, which is holding up great. It doesn't seem to have bu bubbled out or anything like that. In the future, I may actually power wash those uh, rocks to give them a little bit more, a little clean. I thought they were cleaner in the pile, but uh, it is what it is. Now that I got running water down here, uh, maybe in the right before the uh, the fall, I might actually just you know run out my water and power wash this to give it sort of a more of a shine to it. But I'm pretty pleased. And then I got my sink here, which is uh, well, it's it's cherry tree. It's cherry tree from up the hill, and uh, we've got our we've got our running water it's shaping up to be an awesome outdoor kitchen. All we've got to do now is uh, find a cook to cook in it. If you guys got a butcher block at home and you're looking to treat it with that oil, the idea is to actually spread it on the wood and then let it soak in. So if there's any puddles, you just basically wipe them off afterwards. But uh, you can see we don't have any standing puddles, but we're going to let that soak in and then we're going to use the rest of the bottle and recoat it at an, a later date. And that'll give us the kind of ultimate, ultimate protection on this particular wood. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this one and uh, join me on the next one.